Hey guys, Waggish American here with another model build, and today I'm going to be doing another build for an, uh, for another group build. Um, this group build is depending on when I release this video up on the Model Makers subreddit slash r slash Model Makers. Um, if depending on when I put up this video, I if it's still open, I'll link in the description. And if you want to jump in, the, the theme is floats, so any float plan or sea plan is is valid. Um, it's pretty small right now, but if more people want to get in, that'd be great. I'm building the ha Hasegawa, Hasegawa 172nd scale type 94-1E7K1. Um, I, this is a, this is an older boxing, so the parts are newer than some of the some of the new boxings you'll get. There's less flash because the tools were newer. I did put the decals into a bag because I thought I was going to be bleaching them, but now that I've been looking at the kit and looking at my paints, I think I might try to just uh, mask these off and paint all this stuff on its own. You can get a pretty good idea of what the kit is like from looking at the instruction manual. Uh, five steps and a very barren painting guide. You can see from the steps, there's not a whole lot of detail, not any real paint call-outs. It's pretty much just, the, I think there's only like 35 or 40 pieces in this kit. They all just kind of fall together. Now, I have started this kit a little bit. I took the fuselage halves off the sprue, and this, this aircraft it was doped silver. All this raised detail is accurate, because that would be fabric. But on the engine cowl, it came with raised panel lines. And looking at pictures of this aircraft on the internet, that this part would actually be metal. So what I did was I cut down the raised panel lines and rescribed them, very similar to the way I did the D520, so that those will be recessed. As you can see, there's literally no interior detail, and that huge ball just to come out. I am going to be adding as much detail as possible so that'll be featured in this build otherwise not a whole lot of flash not really any flash anywhere I, I don't know if it'll come up but I do really like the rivet detail on these floats they're clean not too large um, they're just very as far as I'm not a huge fan of raised rivets or anything but as far as if you have to have them that's how you do them wing is molded pretty nicely uh, nothing really to talk about there, and it's pretty much the same thing on the other seat. These chairs are almost definitely going to be dis just not used. Those don't look anything like what they should. They do have this handy little stand, or uh, not really stand, but a nameplate, and I may actually end up using this just for the display until I can find part the parts for the catapult that you can get that goes with this and a couple other their seaplanes. Finally get to the clear pieces. They're not very good clear pieces. They're very thick. And these ones are just... You can't... They just warp the crap out of everything. So I'm probably... So It's good that this kit doesn't have a full canopy. It just has these windscreens. I'm not really going to do anything to fix that. That'll just have to be a thing that kind of is. With that, that's pretty much the whole kit. Uh, I'm going to get started building. I began the build by cutting out all of the cockpit parts. I then took the cockpit floor that the kit provided and put it in its place in the fuselage, marking it with a pencil to show where I needed to cut out the frames. So I had some troubles recording this. I was really scrunched over the model, had to hold a lot of stuff to get this to work, really. But um, you can see the modifications I've begun to make. That's styrene I cut makes a uh, frame got that on both sides the big open windows you can actually see a lot of these a lot of the cockpit so I'm going to do as much detailing as I physically can um, at my current ability like look at how much you can see in there I'm gonna try to load this thing up with detail and I think I got my camera thing sorted out so I will be sure to show you the rest of what I add. Using a piece of Tamiya tape, I traced out the contour of the inside of the fuselage. 
I then used this to cut out a new control panel out of sheet styrene, which I marked the dials into and later drilled out with a Dremel. I used white glue to temporarily tack the control panel in place to make sure that everything fit before I went to glue it in permanently. Based on my references, the kit provided cockpit floor. The pilot seat was actually sitting way too low, so I cut some sheet styrene to shape and used it to lift the floor up. I then began work on the, on the seats. Every single seat was modified in some way, although I only got a little bit of footage of me adding a seat back to the pilot seat himself. You can see the other modifications in the attached pictures. With my seats completed, I began to install everything into the cockpit. I started putting in the chairs. I added a little rudder pedal system from scraps from my spares bin. And then later I went on to put in some extra little tidbits and add in the control sticks. In these pictures, you can see the finished cockpit already be painted up. All cockpit interior areas, save for the fuel tank, which I'll mention in a, in a minute, were airbrushed with Tamiya XF71 Cockpit Green. This is my first time airbrushing Tamiya, and now that I have their actual thinner, I must say I'm very impressed. Using sheet styrene, I made a fill-in fuel tank and painted it Tamiya Metallic Blue. With the majority of the airbrushing done, I used a brush to pick out the smaller details, such as the leather seat cushions and other small details throughout the cockpit.
Once all my paints had dried, I applied a coat of, flat, of future floor polish to all interior surfaces. Once the future had dried, I applied an oil wash of black to all surfaces except the seat cushions which received a very dark brown. I accidentally let the wash sit for too long, so removing it was quite the labor intensive process, so I only have pictures of the after. Once I had finished painting the interior, I had masked off the side windows and using PVA glue attached them to the fuselage sides. I then glued the completed cockpit floor to the fuselage sides and then sealed the fuselage. As you can see, the fit of the fuselage was not great and required a lot of tape to hold in place. After applying putty to several of the seam lines, I vigorously sanded them down, making the fuselage smooth. I then assembled the tail planes. These fit fairly well and required very little filler to clean up. I then attached the lower wing. Yes, only the lower wing. I figured the spy plane would be ne next to impossible to paint if both wings were attached at this point. With most of the main body of the aircraft done, I could begin working on the floats. 
there's really not much to say here. They went together well, they fit well, and the rivets looked fairly decent. Finally, I began working on the last major sub-assembly, the upper wing and the wing struts. These went together fairly well, although I did have to do some sanding down on the wing struts to make them fit into the holes in the wing itself. With all the major assemblies done, I could finally begin airbrushing the plane itself. I began by spraying a primer coat of Tamiya X-1 black. They don't specify that it's a gloss black, but it it's either a gloss black or a semi-gloss black, given the, the outcome. This is my primer coat. I then went over every part of the model and painted it with um, Vallejo model air silver I like this paint a lot and if my metal if my metal Vallejo metal coat stuff doesn't come in I may end up using this for a lot of metal aircraft
From the beginning, I never really trusted this kit's decals. And even if I did, the red that they supplied their Hinomaru's was very, very dark, both in reference to other aircraft and in reference to the red I was going to use to paint the tail. So I made the decision to paint my own Hinomaru's. I cut out circles, the correct size, and masking tape. I then sprayed some flat white acrylic paint to give it a sort of non-metallic base. I also did this on the tail to give everything a good base for the red. I then thinned down some Tamiya XF7 flat red and sprayed it on the Hinomaru's and the tail section. The final result, look, I think, looks very good. Once I finish painting all the reds, and I believe I have applied decals by this point, I used panel or Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color Black to give depth to the few recessed areas on this aircraft, such as the control surfaces and the points where the wings fold, and the few small panels that I rescribed early on in the process around the engine, where the aircraft would have been metal instead of fabric. Finally, once I had finished the panel line wash, I could glue the top wing onto the bottom wing. Not shown, after I did this, I actually went and rigged the whole airplane with thread and did some light weathering.
overall, this kit was not great, but it was not ever supposed to be. I knew going in that it was going to have some rough fit and be basically barren in the cockpit. It's part of the reason I got it. I really wanted to try some detailing. Uh, it was a good ex opportunity to experiment with spraying Tamiya paints, which I'm very happy with. I'm not going to be rigging with thread again. Um, I'm going to go buy some Easy Line for my next project. Uh, about it for this model specifically. As for like a channel update sort of thing, I think this is about the length my videos are going to be now. Hopefully. I got my camera situation mostly sorted out, so I should be able to capture everything now. Um, some videos are going to get broken down into several part videos like a very special 130 second scale project I've got coming up and some larger planes like my collection of large German bombers. Anyways, if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and see you next time.